right, we're joined by Ralph Santola. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for asking. It's our pleasure to spread the word. I know Metal for Hire is a big new project for you, but let's go back a little bit. I, I know you were uh, you were born. Were you born in the Tampa area? No, I was born in Charlotte, North Carolina, but uh, we moved down here when I was six or seven. So I mean, I consider myself full on Floridian. Sure. So I guess you you you're used to the humidity, so it's it's normal for you. Yeah, okay. and I I actually love the summer, the heat and the bright sunshine. I can't stand winter, cold, darkness, anything like that. Wow. Well, I know. Uh, at what age did you start start playing the guitar? Seven. Okay. And who were your influences? Who who inspired you coming well, up? Oh, when I first started, uh, my parents made me just like they make some kids take piano lessons or whatever. And then um, I was like eight or nine. I discovered Kiss, so I liked it more then. And but I still did a lot of other things, making model airplanes, playing soccer, or whatever. And then when I was 12, I heard UFO Obsession. And as soon as I heard Michael Schenker play the guitar, I'll never forget that day. I remember wow. that moment forever. I was like, that's what I have to do with my life, which okay. is probably a cataclysmic mistake. But there you go. Amazing stuff. And Schenker's still out there doing it. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there's the story in uh, 06 of you throwing a Red Bull can at a officer in Laredo, Texas at a DSI show. What was that all about? First of all, man, I, I live in Hillsborough County, Florida, so I, would, <laughs> I know better than to do something like that. And then we were in Laredo, Texas, right on the border uh, where on the other side it's super dangerous. I mean, it's a dangerous area. Right, border I, I, town. I'm not gonna. I'm never gonna fucking do something like that. I just avoid the police like the plague. Glenn, we kept having problems during the gig. The the, the promoter, this girl, she just was completely inept. It was a tiny little like high school PA. All this kind of stuff. So after three or four songs and power outages, Glenn just kicks over the PA. And says that's it. I quit, and people and hauled out, and people started rioting because we'd only played three or four songs. I went upstairs, um, uh, um, you know, and leaving the club. There was a private, like the backstage was upstairs, uh, but it was there was a railing over it. And all these, uh, I see regular cops come in. I'm like, fuck, this is crazy. Uh, downstairs, and. Uh, I turned around and then I was in the middle of telling a joke uh, to a guy in one of the opening bands. Mm -hmm. And I hear boom, boom, boom on the stairs behind me. And I turned around and they maced me, threw me on the ground. There was broken glass there in the upstairs thing, a broken bottle or something. It put me in and kind of rolled me in it. And one of our, one of my friends that just happened to come on tour with us was like, hey, he's not resisting. What are you rolling him in glass? doing that they're like uh you know shut the fuck up or you're going to jail too but there was i was never even charged with anything because i didn't do anything the the thing that the district attorney for whatever fucking county that is did said no charges no evidence of any crime so that you know so they thought you but, were part of provoking it huh they thought you were part of provoking the the riot what Standing there talking to somebody, telling them a joke. Yeah, I mean, it's that's crazy. Oh, you mean is that what they thought? Yeah. The, the, I I doubt it because it was already going on, and it, I mean, but kind of probably I think waning by the time the police even got there because I'm sitting there telling the guy a joke, and how do they know who I am or that I'm in the band or anything like that? And Glenn was long gone, of course. Right. When they had, how did you join Glenn and Deicide? How did that story all come about? Well, me and Jack Owen are really close friends. And uh, one summer, I was playing with Sebastian Bach, and Sebastian Bach wanted to uh, take the summer off except play one festival in Italy so he could do some TV thing and make money. And then I was like, you know, I was fine with that. But 
then he didn't want me to do anything else. He's like, I gotta feed my kids. I was like, I gotta feed my kid too. <laughs> what your kid deserves to eat and mine doesn't. That's what I do. It's play music to support myself. And he just flipped out. Uh, anyway, and Jack, Jack called me up and asked me, uh, right as that was going down, uh, did I want to do 28 dates with D-Side? And I, I, had, I needed a, a gig, so I said, yeah. So now how long were you in the band? Off and on, because I quit that band three times. So that was in 2000. Four or five or six, I can't, no, I think that was in 2006, I think, uh, that I first joined, or 2005, maybe, mm -hmm. and I quit in Italy in 2012, for the last time. Yeah. Now, obviously, there's a lot of wild shows, but what what was the normal reason for leaving? You just got fed up? It was just too much to handle. I do. I just didn't. I'm not going to be around Glenn Benton anymore, and that's that's all there is. Right. You know, it's no. He's just. I, I, that's not the kind of person I want in my life. Got it. Well, I know. Obviously, you've also uh, played with Death and Obituary and Iced Earth. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what? Um, what is the the highlights of playing? You know, with these other bands. It, obituary for sure. Um, because those guys are my really, really good friends. I mean, they're like my brothers still, and that's the only band I've ever gotten fired from. I got fired from Obituary, but those guys are like my brothers, and we had so much fun, and it was just so cool. Um, actually, I just got off the phone about 10 minutes ago with Donald Tardy about uh, having him play drums on an album I'm producing. So Great. And I know you have a project called Toxic. What's that about? No, no. Toxic was a band uh, in the early 90s, one of the first Roadrunner bands. Okay. Guitarist is a good friend of mine. They put out two records. He decided to get back into music a couple years ago, and he's going to do an album. He worked on demos and all this stuff, and he got me and Jason Bittner from Shadows Fall on drums, uh, and the bass player from another band, I forget what band it is, uh, and, uh, but it just, you know, I went up there once to New York, but it just never, nothing ever happened, so, you know, I've got other things to do, and Jason is in Flotsam and Jetsam now, so. Got it. Now, please tell us about Metal for Hire and, and what you're contributing to that. Well, it's a, it's a new website that, uh, has a lot of like top notch, top tier metal musicians that uh, will put people who want to use their services in touch with them, and uh, you know, different people do different things. Bjorn Street, the singer for Soul Work, when they first started to do this. He got in touch with me and asked me if I would do it, and I, I said definitely. And um, you just you offer different things. Like I offer session guitar. Like I'll play guitar on people's stuff, mm -hmm. uh, um, guitar lessons, songwriting, and uh, producing. So and the fans, you know, not well. I guess they would be fans, but the people that want, you know, if you want me to play a guitar solo on your album or play. 10 guitar solos on your album, you know, you just click on my thing there and, and the website puts you in touch with me and then we, we figure it out. You make a proposal, I read it, get back with you and then we get it going. So it's basically making it easier for up and coming artists to get name, name talent on their recordings. Yeah. Okay, great. That's a great way of putting it. Sure. Well, now what's your outlook, you know, on, on the rock world? Because obviously a lot of changes in the business everybody's kind of morphing into finding other ways to you know make a living like this but in in general obviously there's still a fanatical audience out there the festivals and the tours oh yeah definitely i don't know man it's you know it's like anything else in life it's cyclical i, I don't you know i'm not a 15 year old 
in a Iron Maiden denim vest. So I don't sit around thinking about the state of metal and what's, you know, I'm worried about what I'm doing and what I'm trying to achieve and things like that. Right. So it's obviously still, still, still alive and well. It's just going through changes and obviously people still love to go to a show and let out their aggression or yeah. energy. Yeah. It's just that the, the, the new bands that are popular, it's a different type of metal. So the, Fans that are into old, different older styles take the new bands, and you know it's just. I mean, it's just. It's not so much think about it so trivial. It's like I'd rather watch rap stuff. I just I don't care about stuff like that. It never even occupies any space in my attention whatsoever. Sure. Now, besides Metal for Hire, is there any new group project or any pet project oh, yeah. of your own you're working on? Oh, yeah. Um, I've got a new sort of super group called Devil's Highway, and it's me, Kyle Thomas from Exhorter and Trouble on vocals, uh, Steve DiGiorgio from Death and Testament on bass, uh, Matt Brunson from Crowbar on guitar, and Tony Loriano from uh, Deep Blue Border, Nile, and 1349 on drums. We're working on the album right now. You can uh, find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Devil's Highway, no apostrophe. Uh, I think it might be Devil's Dash Highway. Oops, <laughs> I don't know. But you can find us on there. And uh, we're working on the album right now. It's uh, And it's like, a, it's like a, a combination of like detune, like low, heavy, heavy groove rock and sort of epic metal put together. Uh, you just, you got to hear it. It's not death metal, though. Wow. Now, Very obviously, the business is changing, but the fact that, you know, great songs and great musicianship will always, you know, be in demand. What advice do you give to the young kids today? Because with this Internet generation, a lot of people think you can just point and click. And, you know, the the amount of dedication and perseverance it takes to really be a great player or a great songwriter is is obvious. So what what advice do you give to the youngsters well, coming up to, to I think the put, most put them in the right mindset? Thing, I think the most important thing, and this was, this was true in 1940, and it'll be true 20 years from now, the quality of the songs is the, is the number one thing. Work on your songwriting all the time. Only fill your head with great music and a lot of different kinds of it. If you just sit there listening to shred guitar or just death metal or just tech metal, you're going to be very, That's you're not going to get, get there as far as songwriting greatness. That's the one thing. And then find the thing in your sort of musical output, whether it's your playing or your playing, writing, everything, that is kind of your own thing and just constantly dig down every day trying to expand that and push out the parts of what you do that are generic. And if you just keep, you know, hacking away at that mountain every day over time, you'll get results. Right. Well, we really appreciate your time, Ralph. We've definitely spread the word on Metal for Hire and Devil's Highway and looking forward to seeing you back on the road. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon.